Hello, dear readers. How are you doing? Uh, this Saturday, October 5th, is Bookshop Day in the UK. Uh, this is a day which is organized by Books Are My Bag and National Book Tokens, which are organizations which encourage people to go out to real physical bookshops and buy books on their, their local bookshops. And I know this isn't something everybody can do because we don't all have bookshops around where we happen to live. Uh, but this is sort of why we need to keep going out to physical bookshops and buy books rather than buying books online because if we don't go to these bookshops then they're going to keep closing down and they won't be there anymore. And as we readers know, there is nothing like going to a real physical bookshop and having a good browse through the shelves and discovering something which you probably wouldn't have found otherwise and getting recommendations from, from booksellers there um, is always a really lovely thing. So it's a, it's a day that I always love to participate in because obviously I, over time, I accumulate a list a mile long of books that I want to buy and that I keep meaning to buy but I don't get around to so this gives me a good excuse to go out to a physical bookshop and, and buy a whole bunch of books um, so I'll be doing that this Saturday and I made a video last year about this day as well I'm um, talking about some of my favorite local independent bookshops um, that I love to go to uh, so I'll put a link to that below so you can get some suggestions if you're in London of good bookshops to go to but one I would like to add to that is um, that's open since then is the Second Shelf Bookshop in London, um, which is a bookshop which almost exclusively stocks books written by women. They do have some books written by men, but the, the main point of the bookshop is a shop to sell these, these beautiful editions of books written by women. And I went to the bookshop just recently for an event uh, about this, this newly published book uh, called Childhood by Tova Divildsen, a Danish author, and I talked about this memoir recently, and they had a wonderful event with the translator of, of this book, even though this was published, I think, first published in the 60s or 70s, but it's just been published in English for the very first time. And so they had an event with the translator and the publisher at Penguin Classics um, who, who found this book and, and wanted to publish it in English. And, uh, and yeah, it was a lovely conversation because I got so much more information about the history of the author and um, her life. And, and uh, yeah, so it was a lovely chat in this bookshop. And, and I love just going in there and perusing and, and seeing all the amazing editions they have of books. Like they have some incredible first editions by classic authors um, like Virginia Woolf and other authors. So again, if you want to put in the comments below some of your favorite local bookshops, uh, that'd be really nice to hear about because uh, wherever you are in the world, uh, it's fun hearing about some good bookshops that are near you and to you know spread that bookshop love. Also for Bookshop Day, every year, Books Are My Bag commission an artist a design to create a specially designed tote bag, um, especially for the day. And this year they've commissioned the artist Yerin Tan uh, to create this really lovely tote bag, uh, which has this um, sort of trippy pattern over it. And this is the same artist uh, who designed the covers for Virago's um, classic editions of books um, that they, they published last year in these really beautiful editions. Um, and you can see she has a particular style where uh, she, she has a very intricate pattern, which she repeats again. And so it has this sort of hypnotic effect to it. And, uh, and this was the designer that won last year um, the most beautiful book award in the Books Are My Bag uh, Readers Awards, which they hold every year and which is happening right now. And just today, the Books Are My Bag Reader Award shortlists have just been announced um, and they're on their website. Um, so they, they have a number of different categories which they include for these awards. Uh, but I really love the, these book awards because the shortlists and the winners are decided by uh, bookstores and booksellers. And they have a category in the award for the Reader's Choice Award. And this is the most democratic, I think, like book award there is because readers get to go on their website and vote and decide which book wins this category. So I'll put a link down below uh, to their website so you can see all the shortlisted books in every category, uh, but also vote yourself on what book you want to win the, the Reader's Choice Award. Now, last year, I talked about the, the novel category for this award and the book shortlisted for that. Uh, but this year, I want to talk about the books shortlisted for the poetry category because poetry is something that 
I'm, I'm one of those readers that who primarily reads fiction and novels and I always mean to read more poetry but I never really get around to it all that often uh, but so I really rely on book awards like this that can point me in the direction of some really good you know, new poetry books uh, that I should be reading and, um, and it really encourages me to read more. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each book um, on the, the shortlist for this category. First off there's a book with a really beautiful cover, The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta and this is a really special uh, thing for me because uh, I, I'd met Dean Atta uh, must be about 10 years ago when I went on a writing retreat weekend and um, he was there and we got to know each other and he's a really lovely guy and an obviously talented writer so it's really lovely to see that he's progressing on and has published this absolutely beautiful book and actually on that same weekend uh, that I went to uh, this writing retreat uh, there was also uh, the poet Jay Bernard was there and I've talked about uh, Jay Bernard's uh, debut poetry collection Surge. It's one of my favorite books of the year so far. I absolutely loved this book and uh, and both of these writers were on that weekend and they've both had these books published this year so it's just really lovely to, to yeah, see that they're doing so well. And I love the sound of the, the premise of this book. So this is a book uh, written in verse and it's about a teenage boy who's mixed race and uh, how he progresses on to university and discovers there that uh, he wants to be a drag queen and his process of doing that. And it includes some lovely illustrations alongside all of the verse. And then also Dean made a video uh, where he's reading sections of this book uh, while dressed up as the Black Flamingo, uh, wandering around the National Gallery in London. So I'll put a link to that down below because um, that's that's a really beautiful video as well. Next is an author uh, very close to my heart as well and very close to all of our hearts because it is Booktube's own Jen Campbell with her debut poetry collection, The Girl Aquarium, uh, with its gorgeous cover. And, and how cool is it that on the cover of this poetry collection is a flamingo, uh, as just like on Dean's book, there's a flamingo, so that's just a funny thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's oh, so happy to see uh, Jen on this shortlist for this poetry prize. And these poems are all about fairy tales that go rotten and the possession of the body and what the definition of beauty is. And these are all subjects uh, that we know from watching Jen's videos and um, that she really specializes in. So you know that they're subjects close to her heart. The Flame by Leonard Cohen. And this is a collection of poetry um, from the very famous musician and singer-songwriter Leonard Cohen uh, which he compiled in the last few years of his life before he sadly died. It includes poems taken from his notebooks uh, along with some lovely illustrations as well. A Year of Nature Poems by Joseph Coelho uh, with illustrations by Kelly Louise Judd and this isn't supposed to be so much an almanac of poetry throughout the year uh, but more charting how the, the lives of animals change throughout the year in a way which kind of mimics how our moods change throughout the year. You know how we can have uh, certain moods swings throughout the, the year. So I think this is supposed to chart that kind of annual journey that we all have. Poems to fall in love with uh, which were chosen and illustrated by Chris Riddell and these this uh, anthology is meant to sort of bring new life into poems which are both old and new. So it includes some very contemporary poems by uh, authors like Neil Gaiman and Holly McNish, uh, but then uh, some very old poems. Um, so by writers like Sappho and Emily Dickinson. And the illustrations he created are meant to sort of breathe new life into these poems. And finally, there is The Poetry Pharmacy Returns by William Seagart. And uh, William Seagart is someone who's been very active in the poetry community. In the 90s, he founded National Poetry Day and the Forward Prizes for Poetry, um, which is another great book award uh, specifically for poetry um, that I always like to follow. And actually, the, the winners for that prize will be announced in a couple of weeks' time. Um, I'm going to go along to the, the ceremony at the South Bank Center, um, which is a really lovely day. I went to it last year, and it's just like a big celebration of poetry where there's lots of readings of poets. And I'm sure on Saturday, I'm going to go out and buy a whole bunch of poetry books um, that have been listed for this prize as well. Uh, but this book is the sequel to uh, a book he, he wrote called The 
the poetry pharmacy. And he uses a similar method in, in this book where he, he picks out um, specific poems um, from different, a whole range of different poets, um, which he, he thinks can be used to treat uh, specific ailments in our lives, whether that has to deal with obesity or depression or a whole range of subjects to do with our emotions. And he writes descriptions alongside these poems of how he thinks they're applicable to our everyday life. And his books have fans in people like Stephen Fry and uh, Elaine de Botton. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to delving into this because I'm curious to see how he handles that and, and selects poems to, to go alongside these particular ailments. Uh, so that is the, the shortlist for the, the poetry category of the Reader's Awards. Uh, these are the six books. And, uh, and so you can, uh, like I said, you can go to the link I'll put below um, and, and vote yourself in the, the Reader's Choice Awards. Um, so that'll be open. Um, it's open now um, and it'll be open until November 4th uh, when you can make your vote. And then the winners will be announced on November 12th alongside the winners of all the other categories. But go and have a look at the shortlists for all the categories and let me know what you think of them. Um, let me know if you're going to go out on Saturday and do some bookshop buying. I know I am. Uh, but thanks for uh, watching and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye everyone.